In this video, we're going to create the cavity and core blocks for the multiples for this part. Again, reopen the last part you had working with, which is the stage two, which is the completed solid um, with all of the money for manufacture done on it so that the part is ready to mold. What we need to do next is to split the part into cavity and core halves. Before we do this, we're going to create some new layers to store the information. Come to the layer box at the bottom and type five and then the word cavity. And that has created a new layer called five with the uh, numbered five with the name cavity. We can correct a second one, layer 10, which we'll call core, and then a final one, which we'll call insert, and that's going to be layer 15. Once you've done that, make sure that you reselect layer 0 as your general input layer. So all new items will be put onto layer 0. Select the solid and then click on the wizard tab and click separate solids. What this is doing is to literally divide the part into separate regions depending on whether they're visible from above or below to give us a cavity and core. There are some faces that are ambiguous so we're going to take those simply select them by dragging a box and then click on the core layer or the cavity layer to put those surfaces or faces onto that particular layer. Now in this case we have uh, some undercuts on the rear tail lights and these need to be extracted in a different direction. Select them and then click the Add Draw Direction button. What this now does is to kind of average the surface normals, which is not necessarily the most appropriate direction for these to go in. So instead, we pick a new draw direction simply by clicking somewhere on that back bumper. And what that does is to reposition the arrow. In this case, it really doesn't matter because we're not going to extract in that direction necessarily, but it makes it easier to visualize which axis things are going in. Click the tick to finish that particular per command and now you can see we have the part splitting into three separate pieces. There are a few faces remaining so just get yourself an appropriate view and then drag a box around those faces and click which side you want them to be added to. The same with the faces on this side. doesn't matter if you can't get them all in one go because you can always just simply come in and individually select using shift and control to add or toggle from the selection until you have all of the pieces that you want. So now everything is set we can say finish. We're going to take the surfaces that are going to become the cavity. So select the upper solid, just using the left mouse button, and with the middle mouse button, click on the five. You can now left click on the five to turn that layer on or off. If we turn this layer off in advance, we can now select the surfaces that are going to become the core, position those onto layer 10, and they will just disappear. Again, middle click to put things onto layer five, uh, layer 15. So now we have the part divided up into cavity and core and insert layers. The next step is to create the split surface. 
But before we do that, we need to fill in the holes in the part. Now, a quick and easy way to do that is to use the Solid Doctor. If it's not already open, click Manage to access the toolbar that has the Solid Doctor on it. And you will see that there are four holes in this part. There's a very large hole around the outside because this is a single skin or sheet solid. Two holes at the back and one in the middle. So two of those holes are actually on the same face. So we can select those and say we want to repair those simply by removing the trimming boundary. The advantage of doing it this way is that we use the existing faces to fill the hole, which means that we have perfect continuity across the border. Select the inner hole by picking it from the tree or selecting it on the screen. And in this case, we're going to replace uh, or fill that hole with a non-tangent surface. This leaves us just one hole which runs around the outside of the part. And in this case, what I'm going to do is to mark the hole boundary and enter edit mode. I can simply exit again. I will get a warning that I haven't got any surfaces selected, but that's OK, because all I want at this stage is the curve. And now I can hit finish. I can now select the composite curve that runs around the edge. At the moment, this has slightly too many points on it, so I'm going to click manage and use the merge and spline tool to refit that curve with intolerance. Now come to surface and I'm going to create a split surface. Before I do this I need to make sure that I'm working in the appropriate axis. So click use the XY face and then split. I'm going to set my distance to something quite big, 150, and then I can preview. What this is doing is to simply radiate out from that curve. And you can see that in some regions that's not doing quite what we'd expect it to do or what we would like. So instead, we're going to align to axes and again, preview. And now every curve in that new surface is either pointing directly along X or along Y. If I'm happy with the surface, I can hit apply and then OK. We're going to take that surface and make a copy of it. So click on home, then copy and then paste. And while that surface is still selected, middle click on the 10. And with the original surface, middle click on 5. So now on level 10, you have the core, surface, core solid plus its split surface and the same here on level 10 with the cavity. So we're going to select the solid, click so, pick the surface and OK. And now we have a single open solid that contains the cavity surfaces plus their associated split. We can turn that layer off and we can do exactly the same here and sew those together. But before we do that, it would probably be a good idea to fill the holes. So click Control K to temporarily undraw the split surfaces. And again, use the Solid Doctor to repair any faults with the solid. Okay. 
So again, as we'd expect, we can see some large holes, but we're also getting a warning that there is a trimming problem. So we can select that fault and say, do an automatic repair of that. And now that trimming problem has been repaired. Come to the solid faults, pick the hole in the middle, and that one we will fill with a non-tangent surface. And the two at the back, we will fill as we did before by removing their trim boundaries. So it's this one and this one. Fill the hole by removing the boundary. Apply. And now we can say finish. Power shape will warn that there is still one large hole remaining. But in this case, that's OK, because we're going to fix that in a second by adding the surface to it. Press Control L to unblank the surface. Select the solid. Click on Sew. Select the surface and right click to apply. For tidiness, it might be a good idea to right click on the solid and choose reverse. And we can now make sure that solid is on layer 10, just by turning layer 10 off. And now we're ready to go on to creating the die blocks. So again, click File, Save As, and give the part a sensible name again. So Toy Car Surfaces Stage 3.